So, so my question really concerns teacher buy-in. Um, you know, as a teacher, I know that getting my students invested in what we do in the classroom really can make a world of difference. Um, and really, teachers who neglect um, this risk having a classroom full of full of, full of students who are just kind of following along but not really caring about what they're actually doing. And so, I'm wondering if the same thing can't the same thing happen with teachers? Um, and there are really two levels to this question. On, on, on the one side, um, on the teacher evaluation side, and on the other side, um, <clears throat> the professional development side. So first, how do you get teachers to buy into the idea of performance evaluation, especially if and when this system is so unfamiliar, filled with inherent risks, and tied to very high stakes? Um, so at my school, I noticed this year that whenever the master educators come around, um, all the teachers kind of band together and go, oh my gosh, the te the, they're here. Like, <laughs> go prepare your lessons. And so, I, you know, I, I, you know this, this is, it's, kind of, it's the truth, though. I mean, I think it's a very us, us versus them mentality, um, which defeats the purpose of the entire system. Um, and the second question on the, on the other side, on the professional development side, is how do you get teachers who are already so busy to carve out time for pro professional development and to see PD as something more than a mandatory requirement to earn a few professional learning units. I mean, I think we kind of talked about this, but I know that at my school, I, I really don't know any teachers who went to any DCPS professional development. And I think that's a sign that either they don't know about the opportunities or they don't care. And how are we going to get teachers to care about that? I'm a Teach for America core member, and I'm forced to go through a lot of professional development. And I think that's wonderful, and it's, it's great, and I feel like I've improved so much as a result. But you know, I think there are a lot of teachers out there who either don't know about the importance or you know, maybe just don't care. And so I'm a little bit wary of letting teachers create their own professional development agendas, as um, Scott was somewhat alluding to. So sorry for talking so long. but. Those are my thoughts. I, I'm happy to take those on. So just one of my favorite related stories um, from this year was early in the year. Um, one of my master educators told me a story about how she arrived at a school, and before going into observed classrooms, the principal said, you know, asked if she could talk with her for a few minutes, um, and then had her wait outside in the office. And then our master educator heard over the intercom, um, the principal say, uh, the master educator is in the building, <laughs> but I have met with her, and she is lovely. So you, can, so you can all take a deep breath. Um, I think there is absolutely um, and sort of us versus them and a lot of, of fear and trepidation. I think one answer to this is just that it will take some time to people, for people to get used to the idea of being observed by um, strangers they're not familiar with. Um, I think that is something that is stressful, of course, and would be stressful to any of us. Um, to have somebody you know, sitting in our offices watching what we do for 30 minutes and then assessing us in a high stakes way. Um, and I don't want to in any way sort of discredit or say you know, that that's not a, a really real thing that I think is really understandable. Um, I, I think a, another thing is that the system earns credibility by being helpful and useful. Um, so I think teachers experiences with impact and, and over the course of the last few months um, as part of this process of, of revising impact um, I've personally done over 50 sessions um, with and I've met in small groups with um, a little over 500 teachers in DCPS just to sit down and talk about um, impact and how it's going and how it can be improved um, and what I found is that um, teachers' feelings about impact are highly dependent on their personal experiences with their principal and with their master educators. Um, so some teachers have found this to be an incredibly useful, helpful, constructive system, have had wonderful experiences with master educators, have found their principals are supportive, um, and have really just seen this as a positive thing. Um, others have found uh, that it has not been as positive experience, an experience, that it's been um, nerve-wracking, that the um, feedback came across as um, more negative or punitive in nature than an as constructive. Um, I think it's really about having the right people doing these things, um, about providing support for the evaluators. Um, it's a skill to be able to provide feedback in a constructive way, um, even when the feedback is negative, even when you're giving a teacher a low score. And I've seen master educators and principals do this in a <coughs> remarkable, impressive way. Um, we also know that it doesn't always happen that way. Um, and so that's, I think, a development um, need for the evaluators themselves. And then I think another side to building teacher buy-in to get to your original question, Wookie, is just really listening to teachers. Um, in revising the system for next year, we've taken this feedback really seriously. 
Um, we, I, we did this set of sessions and did them also for all, all other staff members who are assessed by impact. Um, and then have engaged in this process where you know, then I brought in groups of teachers, you know, sent out emails and brought in groups of teachers to actually revise, uh, look at some drafts of revisions we were considering and get their feedback on those. Um, and then once we had revised the drafts again, send them out to more teachers and get feedback. Um, and what's, what's been nice is, is some feedback from teachers saying, wow, I could really see how you took what we said in these sessions seriously and you actually changed. So I think there is a sort of gathering feedback that is, you know, that can be done in a perfunctory way. Oh, we held these sessions and so, you can see that we listen to people. Then there's doing it in a really real way, which is we've made changes based on what you said. Um, and I think that helps to build buy-in and, and also just demonstrate respect. Um, I can briefly talk about the PD end. You know, again, this is about earning credibility through PD being useful um, and you know, being useful the first time a teacher goes to a session. Um, and I've certainly heard from teachers that if they go to a session and it's not useful, they're not gonna go to another one. Um, we're working on expanding the, the, the variety of ways in which teachers can access PD in DCPS, um, one a, a big um, point um, of emphasis is in the school-based instructional coaches. We've expanded funding for PD by 400% over the last um, three years since the chancellor came out. A lot of that funding has gone to making sure there are instructional coaches in every school. Um, we, we've also, um, we are also working to make sure that master educators can spend more of their time supporting teachers, and we're hiring more of them next year than we had this year to make sure that we can use their subject area expertise to go into schools and support teachers in ways that coaches may not be able to, you know, in very subject-specific ways. Um, and of course, we're, we're constantly looking for ways to improve the centrally-based PD. 